Well, hey there, friend, and welcome back for another episode of the Your Hair Mentor podcast, where I'm your host and your hair mentor, Crystal Green. And I invite you to come take a listen to the top leaders and thinkers and experts and innovators in the beauty industry as they share their stories of triumph and struggles and success in creating their businesses behind the chair. I hope you enjoy these episodes just as much as I did recording them. See you on the inside, friend. Um, Lindsay, I am so excited to have you on the Your Hair Mentor podcast today. I have so many questions. I feel like everything that you do and that you post about is almost in a different language. So I'm really excited to kind of unpack this with you today. So um, I guess first and foremost, Lindsay, can you give me just like a, a quick introduction to my listeners of who you are? Of course. Uh, my name is Lindsay Means. I am an alignment alchemist and I help soulpreneurs get off the hamster wheel of healing and start living the life of their wildest dreams now. And I do that with using tools like personal uh, development tools, like uh, nervous system regulation, human design, and all sorts of other things. And uh, thank you for that feedback that I speak in a, <laughs> in a foreign language. Human design, one of my, one of my, um, gifts is teaching it in an easy to understand way, but it's still a lot. So that totally makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess we can just start there. Like what is human design? Let's, let's just start there. And I'm sure we have lots of other things to cover here. Yeah. So human design is a modality and it combines astrology, Kabbalah, I Ching, the chakra system and quantum mechanics. It uses your birth details to create your energetic blueprint. So the cool thing is no one on earth has the same human design chart as you because you're a individual and you're here, you've got your own blueprint. You've got no one on the earth has the same frequency of voice as you. No one on earth has the same thumbprint as you. And oftentimes we can feel like we have to be like everyone else and, or we're put into a box and human design celebrates diversity. And that's one of my favorite things about it. Um, so it's really about your energy. It tells you how you transmit and receive your energy. It literally can tell you everything about yourself. I've had, I've read over probably now, like over 600 charts. And every time I read a chart, someone's like, how do you know me? I'm like, well, I don't know you. I just know your energy. <laughs> Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, I uh, I was exposed to the chart a little bit. I think I did one of your like freebies that you put out there. And I was like, okay, now I need someone to translate <laughs> this for me because it, although it looks pretty, I don't understand any of it. Yeah, I always tell people uh, just be prepared because it looks like an alien language. There's weird terminology and, and um, names and signs and symbols and all of the things. It is a lot. Like, it's a lot. The first time I saw my chart, I was like, what the hell am I even looking at? This is really weird. And at the end of the day, there's really only two things that you need to know about your chart. And that's what I tend to talk about a lot. Um, I use human design as a tool for healing. So it's like a map on how to heal, which is really freaking cool. But there's definitely a lot that goes into it. They say it takes seven years to fully live by your human design. Um, so it's a commitment. It's an experiment. That's what they say. It's an experiment. And when you, this is with anything, it's like, take what resonates, leave the rest. And when you can apply some, a couple of things, which I'm sure we'll get into it today, when you can apply these few things and really simple shifts make a huge difference with human design. That's the the cool thing about it is like, it's almost instant results in certain areas because you, you shift a little bit and then it's like, ah, oh, this feels so much easier. It's kind of mm. like if you're walking in your shoe with a rock in it. And then you take out the rock or the pebble or whatever. And it's like, oh, okay, this feels much better. But all you needed to do is take out that little pebble. Interesting. Okay, so I want to go back to when you introduced yourself, you said you help soulpreneurs. So to me, that speaks to someone that's like, a little bit in tune to some woo-woo stuff, right? Okay. <laughs> so then like, I love a little bit of woo-woo. I, I like, I'm like woo-ish, right? I like to dabble yeah. in the woo. And so I'm like, I think I'm a soulpreneur. Can you, yeah. can you define who a soulpreneur is for us? Definitely. Um, so I'm actually a former hairstylist of over 10 years and transitioned into what I do now about 
I retired officially behind the chair in 2001, um, April of 2001. So yeah, you hit the nail on the head, soulpreneur. So if you feel like it's your soul's purpose to do whatever you do, then you're a soulpreneur. Um, there are so many soulpreneur hairstylists, even if you're commissioned, like you're doing your heart's work and like you have your own business behind the chair, even if you're not a, a booth renter or have your own space or have your own studio. Um, and so that's it. It's like following your soul's purpose, your soul, your heart is in your business. It's in what you do. And those are the people that I want to help. Mm, I love that. Uh, when it comes to some of the things that I'm working on, not behind the chair anymore, but in my like educational space and this podcast and stuff like that, I like to tell people that it's like, I can feel it in my bones like it's like it almost brings me to tears when I get excited and talk about it and I have to imagine that's kind of what you're talking about here definitely 1000 percent like you're just so lit up about what you do you're so excited to help the people you serve you you might be a little obsessive with it like it might be all that you think about and believe me, I've been there, but it is healthy to disconnect, <laughs> but yeah. And, and people have to be into spirituality. They have to be into a little woo woo. If you're going to, to come into my world and you don't have to know everything by any means, but I'm very woo. Like I'm very, very, very woo. Uh, and I've recently been building up the courage to bring more of that into my containers and into the things that I do and magic and alchemy and transformation. And, and that is definitely my vibe. That's so cool. Okay. So we're just going to assume we're all a little woo if we're still listening. And most people that are listening to this podcast also would probably identify as a soulpreneur now, right? They're like, yeah, duh, I'm doing something <laughs> that lights me up. And so walk with me through this idea of like healing the soulpreneur. Like what are we, what are we healing from? What are we, what are we doing here? Do you have all day? <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Um, so as a solopreneur, as an entrepreneur in general, but as a solopreneur, you are the heart of your business. And that is a big, big thing because when, when we are, so the healing journey can take place in so many different ways. Like for me, it started off with a thought that changed my life. And that thought was, oh my God, I think my dad's a, a narcissist. And then immediately after that was, oh, I need therapy. And so it can happen like that, where you just suddenly you have this awareness of like, wait, maybe, maybe money isn't evil. Maybe these people aren't bad. Maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to do with my life. Like we just have this kind of, a lot of times that's how it happens. It's just, just this sudden awareness that there's more out there than you knew, or there's more out there than you thought. And so the person bumps right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a beaut It's like one of those mind blown emoji moments <laughs> <laughs> where it's just like, Oh my God, everything that I knew is like, like completely shooken up. And so healing comes in so many different forms. And, and that's why I like to say getting off the hamster wheel of healing, because when you go down this path, sometimes you can become obsessive and you're like, where's the limited belief? Where's the block? Where's that? Like you can just continue to be on that hamster wheel of healing. And there it's a cycle. There's, there's, I like to call it the death and rebirth cycle. And this is you look in life, like springtime, everything comes and summer, and then everything dies in fall and winter. And then it comes back and we are humans. We are meant to live in cycles, especially women. And we have our own monthly cycle. We are designed to live with the cycles of the earth, but we're not doing that. We're not taught how to do that. So we're just go, 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 go all of the time. And we never take a break. And then you wonder why you're burnt out and you wonder why your body's falling apart. And so healing can come in many, many, many ways. There's many modalities, many teachers, many, many aha moments, but uh, that's why I love human design because it really is that map of healing. I can have, you could tell me something that you're struggling with and I could look at your human design chart and be like, oh yeah, that's because of X, Y, Z. And here's how to move through it. That's really fascinating. I interviewed this gal recently, um, who is an Enneagram specialist, mm -hmm. which is also really cool. And like, you know, borderline woo. And some of the things that she talked about is like, it's like your motivations that determine mm -hmm. your Enneagram number. And so then when you go and you look at a behavior and you look at the motivations 
behind that, it kind of makes sense why you're behaving a certain way. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you're not, you're not getting the input you need or whatever to satisfy that motivation that lives in you. And I almost wonder mm-hmm. if this is something similar. You can look at like the human design might tell you someone's motivations or like deepest desires. And then if they're not, um, what is what, like portraying that in a way you could be like, bingo, this is what you need to work on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the interesting thing is that everyone's living by their design. So a lot of what I do is like, I like to I say often, like, I'm not telling you anything new. I'm telling you about yourself through a new empowering lens. And every kids are living by design already. Like we, we are born and we are, are that you, I look at every single kid. I've learned a lot about human design from the kids that I've been around because they're already doing it. And we, this is what the healing journey, like we, we are pure, innocent little kids. And then through life and society and how you grew up and limited beliefs and all of the freaking things we, we learn. It's almost like you get taught, do this instead of what's natural and innate within you. And so you do that thing, but you're going against your own body. And then you're like, wait, this isn't working. This doesn't feel good. And so then you have this discord. And so that's the biggest thing is that human design gives you the tools on how to trust your body so that you can let your body lead you. And in the personal development world, when there's a million teachers, a million books, a million podcasts, a million modalities, and more created every single freaking day, it can be very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So when you know how your body operates and you know how to trust it and follow it, your body will lead you to all the things that are perfect for you on your own unique healing journey. Fascinating. So then I'm curious, do you work with people on like a one-on-one coaching basis? Yes. Is that what you do mostly? Do you have group stuff too, or just one-on-ones? I do all the things. <laughs> so I, I do have some one-on-one offerings. I have online courses and then I'm really obsessed with groups right now. So I love group work. Um, so those are my main things is uh, one-on-one online courses and then groups. Okay. I'm just trying to imagine like what it would look like. So like, let's say I wanted to be a coaching client of yours. Would we be talking about like things I would be thinking, things I would be doing, like how, what is, uh, moving through this human design look like? Oh, such a good question. So within my business with one-on-ones, I have two one-on two one-on-one offerings for a, a one person, and it would either be a walk and talk session. So I don't really teach human design anymore. There's a lot of people out there that will be like, oh, you're a manifesting generator. And that means X, Y, Z, and you have gate 10 and gate 13 and the channel of charisma. And this is what all of that means. I know I just said a lot of words that you're like, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> I don't do that. I, it's my tool in my toolbox to help you because if you can't tell by what I literally just said, it's like overwhelming. And, and there's a lot that go, when, when I first started doing this, I, the poor people that I worked with in the beginning, because they just got so much information. I give a lot of information and they're like, like paralysis, you know, like the paralysis of like, what do I do now? <laughs> so I really use it as a tool to heal. And for business, I have a biz alchemy session. So with that one, I do go more into like the, the different aspects of your chart, but with that session, you could say, Hey, Lindsay, I'm struggling with X, Y, Z. And then I look at your chart and then I help you with it. And I help you heal because you are the, the heart of your business. So when you shift and grow, then your business shifts and grows. And then this is something I came up with. I, I don't know how many other people are doing it. So it's a little less esoteric, but your business has its own human design and your business has its own spirit and entity. And so I teach you how to co-create with your business. Um, it's really powerful. Uh, the, the sessions that I've done are, are, they're like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. And oftentimes as, as, uh, entrepreneurs, especially solo, it, it can feel lonely and you're like, what do I do? But then when you can connect with this, this, the spirit of your business, it's really powerful. 
Whoa, that is yeah. <laughs> fascinating. I'm like, I need to know more. <laughs> I'm like, I want to, I want to know the spirit of my business now. Um, Lindsay, as you're talking about this stuff, I cannot help, but like immediately thinking about how, uh, with hairstyling, right. With a hairstylist, we learn all these like technical terms, all these things that we, we understand the vocabulary of and all these things ideas like if you're in the break room with other hairstylists you can speak the language but then when it comes to speaking to a client if you just come at them with like level six ash blah blah you know they're like whoa I don't understand like why I I can't make a decision like yeah I'm paralyzed by all of this information when instead if you can like break it down speak their language in, mm-hmm. and put it in terms they understand and more make it like results driven, not like I'm going to just tell you all these things. It's like, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do to get to the result. That totally makes sense. Right. Yeah. And it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's, <laughs> as you know, it's complicated. And so it was frustrating me. A lot of sessions I would like the, the traditional reading type of a session, I would leave feeling depleted. And I don't like that. (laughs) That's not, that's not good for me. That's not good for anyone. And so I, uh, through my journey, I've learned, okay, this is what I, this is, this is mainly for me. Like I love teaching the basics. I love teaching the foundation. I've got an online course that goes over the foundation and I love that. But then like on my walk and talk session, I'm walking. Um, the other person is hopefully walking too, because being in nature is magical and they'll be telling me stuff. And then I'll be giving them insight through the lens of their human design. And then all of the other tools that I've gathered on my journey. And so those are really powerful because yes, human design's involved. So it's, a, it's more like personalized. Um, and I memorize everyone's chart. So I'll just see it in my head and then it'll be like, ping, ping, ping. Like these are the areas to talk about. And then I share it in as easy to understand as I possibly can. But that's something that I I'm definitely gifted at. A lot of people have said, wow, I've heard about human design from a lot of different people. And it finally makes sense listening to you talk about it. So I do try to share it in the most easy to understand way possible, but I love that you bring that up about the, the translation, because sometimes we get lost in translation and you, you really have to learn the thing that came to mind was dumb it down, but I don't like that terminology, but it's like simplifying it. Like you have to understand if you're at a college level and you're trying to talk to a kindergartner, you're going to, you're going to have, like, you gotta, you gotta figure out how to speak to someone. And that's, that's a huge thing, a huge thing in entrepreneurship, something I've struggled with for sure. And so it's really important to be able to know how to speak to your audience in a way that they will understand. And then also how to attract your audience that will understand you too, because just as many types of individuals as there are out there, there's just as many types of mentors to look up to. I've had to learn that myself, you know, in terms of like learning business and marketing and anything really, I might look at someone and be like, eh, I don't know. I'm not really like jiving with the way that they speak. And then I find someone else and I'm like, oh my God, that's what I needed to hear. It's the same message. It's just wrapped up a little differently and interpreted a little differently. Oh, I love that you bring that up because I, I talk about this often. It's like, you have to let your freak flag fly. Oh, I love that saying. I did not get that. My, my mentor, I cannot claim that. My mentor, Ashley Brianna Eve, she talks about that and that just like anchored in. And I was high, like, this is the biggest thing. Like, I thought I was a weirdo my whole entire freaking life and I was hiding it. And when I read my human design, my human design, like, yeah, girl, you're a freaking weirdo. And this is who you are. And I have never felt more seen, heard, or validated for being me. There's been so many moments that I will read something about my human design and I will bawl my eyes out because it's like, okay, there's nothing wrong with me. This is actually a superpower of mine. And when in a, there's a million hairstylists out there, there could be like, I worked at a salon one time where there was literally a salon right next door, a salon, a couple blocks down a salon behind me. And there are so many hairstylists out there. And there's also enough people for every single hair ch- hairstylist to be fully booked. But if you're trying to be like Susie down the street, or if you're not showing off who you are, your personality that's why people come to you. That's why people stay to you. Mm-hmm. There were some 
I was speaking to hum, uh, to hairstylists for a while when I first started, because that's why I love, I love doing podcasts that are for hairstylists. I love doing, um, I I've done a lot in the hair world and I love it because you're so you're transmitting and receiving energy to and from your clients all day long. And when you understand that you understand what's theirs and what's yours and how to disconnect from it, magic happens. Like most of my stress and anxiety, I had so much stress, stress and anxiety behind the chair. And when I understood what, where I was taking in energy from my clients, most of that stress and anxiety went away. Um, so I, I have a huge passion to sharing human design with hairstylists and some stat, I can't remember the exact thing, maybe you know it, but it's like 70 to 80% of the reason why people stay with you is your personality and only yes. like 20 to 30 or less your skill set. Yes. And we hear that all the time. Like so many times people are like, she doesn't really do my hair that well, but I just love her. Mm -hmm. So you, that's why you're the heart of your business. And that's why it's important to show off your personality, show your face on your social media, talk, let people know who, who they're hanging out with for two to three hours, every six weeks, who they're telling their deepest, darkest secrets to like that is where you're going to see a big change. Um, anytime I see a hairstylist, uh, Instagram where it's just photos of a hair, I'm like, Oh, they're missing out so much because no one knows who they are. Right. Exactly. No one can connect with them. Mm -hmm. It's funny. You mentioned the freak flag thing. Um, I just have to share it. It was like in the very beginning of my career as a hairstylist, I worked with this, um, nail technician who was like probably 20 years, my senior. And she was hilarious and like, just didn't give a fuck about <laughs> anything. Um, and I was like, dang Dawn, I'm like, I don't know how you, you do this. And she was like gorgeous. Like she was literally just doing her own thing. And she was like this beautiful being. And she goes, Crystal, we all have freak flags. We just don't all fly them. She's like, quit hiding your flag. I'm like, what yes. are you talking? I'm like, I'm not hiding my flag. And then I like went home and thought about it. I was like, oh, I am hiding my flag. Dang it. Mm -hmm. Right. It's so true though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there, I really believe, uh, that everyone, everyone is like contracted to work with everyone. Like every per, I believe in mates to your soul and I'm single and I'm dating. And that's really helped me with dating in particular, but it, it's really powerful for everything. It's like every single person that you meet, you're a mate to my soul, the, the client, your clients are mates to your soul, the random person that you meet in the grocery store, mate to your soul. And every, we're all giving and taking, giving and receiving, and especially energetically. And so I believe that there are enough clients for everyone in the world, whatever you do. And in order to be thriving, you have to show up all of you because people know energetically when you're hiding, mm -hmm. people know, or you're putting on this mask and it's not who you are. So you're attracting the wrong people. And then you wonder like, what, what's going on here? And so when you just start showing up full, authentic and vulnerable, that is magic because people then resonate with you. Love that word. Yes. Okay. I think this is such a good conversation to be having because I see so commonly throughout social media, uh, very popular coaches and industry leaders talking about boundaries, policies, you know, it's like fire people, cancel people, protect yourself. And it's, to me, it's like an energetic wall that they're putting mm -hmm. up between them and their clients. And I'm like, I don't think that is how you're going to last, right? It might feel good in the moment if you're just guarding yourself because you're not in this good space, you know, energetically. And so you're like, everyone stay out, stay away, but you're also not taking in like the good vibes, right? And so I don't know, I really love the idea of like being vulnerable. It's like, you're still taking care of yourself and you're not like receiving negativity necessarily, but you are allowing yourself to be exposed in a way and allow people to know you, which is so crucial for relationships. Oh my God. I love that. And I love that you brought that up about to me, what you just described. And I've seen that before in multiple different industries. <laughs> and to me, that's reactive. You got hurt by someone and then, and most of the time you get hurt because it's your own problem. 
Like you didn't have boundaries in the first place. And then you learn about boundaries and you're like, I am putting up the boundaries because too many people have hurt me. And that is very heart closed energy and boundaries show people how to love you. I am the boundary queen. I, I have such amazing boundaries in my business because it shows people how to love me. And oftentimes too, people impl- implement boundaries, but then they don't uphold them. And then they blame the other person. So I have seen this often, 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 and I can feel the energy. I'm like, Ooh, like, that's not like you're going to, it's repelling. Yes. It's repelling. And so I don't, but I've done it before. I've done it before. Like when someone, you know, doesn't show up for that thousand dollar, you know, extension service that was booked out six weeks ago. And you're like, damn it. (laughs) And you're, you're mad. Like Mm -hmm. then you want to make sure that doesn't happen again. And so you blast it, but it's like, whatever you're sharing on social media, are you sharing from a space of love? Are you sharing from your heart or are you being reactive? And there's a big difference there yes. and I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it, but it's, it's really like the vulnerability and, and it's really being, it, it comes back to the body. It's like knowing I've shared some stuff and I can feel it energetically and I'll delete it or so I will delete stuff because I'm like, mm, Lindsay, that was out of alignment. And so I'll check myself. But if you're not, this is where human design comes in. This is where alignment with your body comes in. Because when you can have that, oh, I did something the other day and I was like, oh, that was, that was from an old, an old version of you that was reacting. And now you have the opportunity to, oh, hi, version of you. I haven't seen in quite a few years. What's going, what's going on here? How can we heal? That's a lot of healing is awareness. Is this where the term that I've seen you use a couple of times, uh, shame reclamation comes in? Mm, I love that you brought that up. So shame is the lowest vibration emotion that you can have. And every single one of us have shame one way or the other. And shame is something that we bury real deep. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to share about it. And this is the first step of my business. So shame is the number one tool for alchemy. So that's where that's my freebie. That's where ideally everyone starts is there. And do you want to hear the story? Heck yeah. I want to hear the story. (laughs) Okay. Just making sure. So I, I've done a lot of work mentally, emotionally, spiritually over since 2017. And my body was the last thing to focus on, like my physical body. I focus on nervous system healing and all of that, but like that actual physical body. So in June, I opened up this healing portal and I connected with my guides and they gave me steps to heal some particular things. Now, I wasn't planning on talking about this to anyone until I was fully healed. And then I'll tell the story. So I'm midway, I'm, I'm doing an ice face bath, which is an amazing tool for uh, nervous system regulation. Um, and Wait, so hold on. I, Wh- what <laughs> <laughs> pin, okay. Pause yeah. the story. We'll pin this. Um, you, so we've all heard, um, well, maybe not all of us, but in the spiritual healing community, ice baths are popular yes. ice therapy, cold therapy. And it's a great way to regulate your nervous system. I jumped in the, I live on a lake. I jumped in the lake when it was 52 degrees and I sat there for two minutes and I was like, okay, this was great, but I'm never doing this again. Like F that. Um, And so I was here, I heard Dave Asprey on a reel one time and he was like, you can get just as many benefits from just putting your face in water because there's a lot of nerve ending. So I will have a bowl that can fit my face and I uh, freeze. I like fill it up a third of the way and I freeze it. And then I pull it out and I fill it up to the top of the water. I wait like 10, 15 minutes. And then I dunk my face in for as long as I can hold my breath. And then I do it two or three more times. And I get a lot of messages from it. It's amazing. I do it at night and it just instantly calms me down. It's an amazing nervous system aware, like nervous system regulation, um, hack. Or tool. literally doing this tonight because I hate um, cold plunging. Like, ugh. my husband loves it. I can't stand it. But I'm like, I could dip my face in cold water. <laughs> your hands too. So if you get your hands with your wrists, I almost feel like the hands hurt worse. But okay. Um, so yes. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Continue oh, your no. story. 
I'm glad that you had me expound on that because it's a magical tool. Um, so I was doing this and the, <laughs> the thing that dropped in was you, part of this is to share this with your audience. And so the next day I came out with it. And so back in 2017, I tested positive for HSV2, which is genital herpes. And I made a reel and I said that, and I, it like went on this shame reclamation because I'm currently on a journey to heal HSV2 through ceremony, ritual, and plant medicine. And part of my, like part of this journey for me is to talk about it. And while I'm going through it. And I was like a little resistant, but then after I did it, it felt so good. And then I have a whole podcast series on uh, shame around sex, shame around money, shame around, can't remember the other one, but um, when I let that go, like when I did that, it really did something transformative for my life and my business. And I've had so many people reach out to me and say, oh my God, Lindsay, like I have that too. And you're the first person I've told. I've never told anyone. And so my freebie is a 20 minute meditation where we feast with our shame. We sit with our shame. We ask it. Shame has a lot. It, whatever is causing you shame actually has a lot of wisdom for you. And I've got 10 plus journal prompts that have you dive deeper into it. And when you shine a light on it, when you witness it, when you put it out there into the open, then it doesn't have as much hold on you. I had a girl who she reached out, she found me and she was like, I, after I did the activation, I told my partner that I just started seeing that I had it and it went amazing. And then she just reached out to me and I think it's been less than a month. She's like, oh my God, Lindsay, I manifested a place to live in London for free for like six months or a year. And I really believe that it's because of this and shame takes up a lot of space in your body. And when you let that go, a lot of magic can flow in. I have to imagine too, it's really hard to show up with vulnerability when you're in a space of shame, right? Because like, they're like the opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, I mean, truly the opposite of any of those, the, the opposite of fear, which all of these like negative feelings are really based in fear if you boil it down. And the shame of no one's going to love me when, when I found out I had it when I was with my ex and I thought we were going to get married. And then when he broke up with me, that was one of the first things I thought of. I was like, I'm going to be single forever because I'm disgusting and no one's going to want me and just all of the stigma around it. And out of the handful of guys that I've told, um, they all took it really well, except one person. He was like the traditional, what I would expect. And so I was very surprised to learn that I can be received in such a beautiful way by telling something that is pretty like taboo, right? Like no one wants to say it like, hi, my name's Lindsay. I've got herpes. Like, no, we don't want to generally, we don't want to say that. Um, but it's a big part of my business. And when you shame the first step, becoming the passenger in your body with human design. And then the last step is becoming the empress. And this is really where you dive deep to excavate all of the deep seated things that are holding you back. Like the father wound, the mother wound, all of these wounds that we have. And, and there's some core wounds that are real stuck that not a lot of people talk about. And at the end of, um, I'm launching this, my signature program for the first time, it starts in a couple of weeks. And in four months, my intention is to lead these women through to where at the end of it, they are, they come out such sovereign beings who trust themselves completely. They trust their heart. They trust their body. They let their body lead and guide them. And they don't need me anymore. Like, girl, you got it. Like you've got, air. that's my goal. Like, I don't want, I mean, I want people to come back. Like I love people, sure. but I want you to have all of the tools that you need to continue on this journey and to find your perfect healing journey. Cause it's not going to be mine. It might be pieces of mine, but that's a beautiful thing. When you become the passenger in your body, you're just like, okay, body, let's go. <laughs> and you just get to be the passenger and enjoy the ride. That is so cool. I'm glad you brought up the Empress because I was like, what is this Empress thing going on here? I mean, it sounds cool just on its own, but <laughs> so the Empress is kind of like the not, I don't want to say end goal, right? Because there's probably, there's no end, but like mm -hmm. the the short term goal in the healing process is to get to the empress state, right? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Within my business, it's the path to the empress and the empress has been so, man, this was probably in 2017, 18. I had, I had noticed so much transformation in my life. And I started talking to all my clients behind the chair, felt like I was screaming from the rooftops, like, just love yourself and everything will be okay. And I remember asking the universe, I was like, I want a tool to be able to teach women how to do what I've done. And that's when Empress channeled in. So Empress is an acronym that stands for expanding love, mirror, pivot, rejuvenate, embody, satisfaction, and surrender. And so I have an online course with this going through this method. And then uh, the four-week program, Becoming the Empress, Claiming Your Royal Birthright, this is really expounding on all of that. And that is my, like, I want, I want people to be I don't want to be like a therapist where you you're in my world for 15 years. Like you can be, but like, that's not the goal. The goal is to have you step into that sovereign power and to understand how your body works. And like I just said, but the Empress has been an archetype for me for a very long time. Cause I, I didn't resonate with goddess. I didn't resonate with like priestess or any of those things. And, and somehow Empress came to me and then the method channeled in and all of the things. So she's been kind of like my higher self, like what I see of my higher self and within my business, it's very Egyptian. I have a lot of Egyptian roots in my not current lineage, but my energetic lineage. And, <laughs> and so Empress is very, very uh, much a huge part of my personal life. And it just, it re recently filtered into my business. I just recently figured out, okay, here's what I'm doing, um, yeah. which feels really good. Awesome. So Lindsay, you used to be a hairstylist and I know you do speak to hairstylists. That's how I found you. It was like through, I can't remember, you were like a guest speaker in some circle that I was aware of. And I was like, who is this person? Like, <laughs> as soon as I heard you speak, I was like, I need to get to know her better. Um, so in your space now, do you speak to hairstylists in particular or like, who is your ideal client? I guess I should say. That's a really good question because that's something that I struggled with my whole entire freaking ever, ever since I into when before COVID happened, I wanted to become an educator or do something. And so I started off with hairstylists and then I moved to spiritual entrepreneurs and then I moved back to hairstylists and then I moved back and I, I felt like I was putting myself in a box. So if you it's really like, I like to say one of my mentors, Ashley Brown, Eve, she says this, you are the niche. So I don't really have an solopreneur is my niche, but that's huge. Like yeah. that could be, I don't care what you do. I don't care who you are. Mainly women. Some men have been attracted to me, but like my main group programs are, are geared towards women. Um, so I don't really have like a particular, they're 45 and between 30 and 45 and they make this much money and they live here and they do that. Nah, and I don't do that. It just, whomever wants to come to me, if you're attracted to me, let's work together. Well, that kind of makes more sense, you know, now knowing better what you're doing. Like, of course you wouldn't put your ideal client in a box, right? Because it's yeah. not about those like physical parameters or whatever. It's more about like the energy that they're putting out there. I was just mm -hmm. curious if there was like a, uh, I don't know, target of some sort, you know, or like, have, do you see a pattern of people that have come to you or is it just like all over the place? I do get a lot. I do work with a lot of hairstylists because I, I work with Jamie C. I've done things with Lindsay Smith of independent or formerly independent beauty pros now Commonwealth collective. Um, there's a lot of like hair influencers that Jody Brown, um, a lot of people that I've been on their podcasts or I've done a workshop within their, their communities. And so, uh, I do, I, I, I do get a lot of hairstylists and every single time a hairstylist follows me, I'm like, Oh my God, I love it. I actually um, was with Jamie C and in Canada and I got to speak on stage and introduce human design to 120 plus people. And I was just like, like, this is, this is what I love doing is sharing it with hairstylists. So hairstylists have my heart. Yeah. If you look at my, my podcast, like there's seasons that I'm just speaking to hairstylists, but it's really, it's, I mean, other than that, it's all over the place. Like VAs, marketing people, other healers. It's really, there's not really a, 
the the thing it's it is interesting because I have gone over like right I'm looking at my sticky note right here because I was like who what types of of human designs are attracted to me Mm. so I did do collect that data and every single person who's worked with me I have a whole spreadsheet and most of them are generator types which is is normal because generator generators and many gens are 70 percent of the population um a lot of it was like okay this makes sense. And then some of the data was very interesting. So I have done that, but everyone. Yeah. I was like, do you find it's mostly people that are in some sort of like creative industry of some sort? Yeah, I would imagine so. Cause I feel like as a, as a hairstylist and every hairstylist I've spoken to talks about this, like, it's cool because we're a business, but it's like this artsy, heartfelt, Mm -hmm. emotional kind of business. And so Mm -hmm. I would think that we'd naturally be attracted to something like this that like taps into that little part of us that we're like, Ooh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Creativity for sure. Cause I mean, that's our, the, the 70% of the population are the generator types and we are tuned for your, what are you again? I don't Your remember. I don't oh, I remember. Gonna, I was going to look it up before I I know. I think it I might be this. generator because that. I think you are. Yeah. I think you are. Um, I mean, 70% of the population are either generator or, or manigen, like I call uh, a manigen. And when we're living by design, satisfaction is our signature. So satisfaction shows up in so many ways, satisfying services, convert. This is so satisfying to me. I love conversation. I love podcasts. I love connecting with people like you. And, and that's how we're designed to live our life is satisfying following the ooze. And then when we're, when we're out of alignment, you're going to be frustrated. And there's a lot of frustrated generator types out there. So that's kind of who, like my marketing, I speak to a lot of, are you satisfied? Are you frustrated? You'll hear me say those words all the time on my social media, because that is who I'm gearing towards. I want to help as many generator types as I possibly can to like be living in more satisfaction than they are. And behind the chair, I'll give you a little assignment should you choose to accept it. And this is for everyone, but especially if you looked up your human design and you're a generator or a manifesting generator, go through the the clients that you work with and or the services that you offer and ask yourself, is this a satisfying person? Is this a satisfying service? And if it's not, get rid of them. And I I do with any single person, especially hairstylists that I work with who are generator types. I'm like, what percentage of your clientele are satisfying to you? A lot of times they'll say 80, 20, I'm mm-hmm. like, get rid of the 20. You got to get rid of them. And they're like, but they've been with me for 20 years. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. If they are not, if it is not satisfying for you that you are not living up to your fullest potential. And here's the other thing. When you are satisfied or when you are frustrated, your clients feel that. Yes. They feel it. Whether you're a poker face or not, they feel it energetically. And we always personalize things. So they may leave. They may love their hair. They may love their conversation, but they may leave with this little, there's just something there. Like, I don't know if she likes me or I don't know if she really like wants me in her chair or wants to do what I'm doing. And that's not nice. (laughs) Like That's not good. So it's really, really powerful to only say yes to the things that are lighting you up and let go of the rest. And the other thing too, I always say this hair, finding a hairstylist is like dating. Some clients are lifers and you're married to them and you love it and you're in the best relationship ever. And then some clients you've been lifers with, but your marriage is falling apart. Mm-hmm but you're not doing anything about it. And there's another hairstylist that can satisfy them way more than you can. Yep. So you're doing those clients a disservice by keeping them. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. So that would be my assignment for you. Like go through anything that's frustrating. If you can get rid of it, get rid of it. And you're going to feel so much better. You're going to be more magnetic. You're going to find people to replace those people. And magic will start happening when you're more satisfied than not. Yeah. And I could say that even goes into like your personal relationships that goes into like activities you do, like anything that you're just kind of like, Bleh. I just feel like it's like dragging you down. I always say if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no, never going to be a hell maybe. 
love it <laughs> you've got all these little zingers it's great <laughs> So um, I have one more uh, thing I wanted to ask you about that I've seen you post. Um, I'm like, I literally had these like this little scroll in my mind of like, I have to ask Lindsay about that. I have to ask her about this because I'm just like, tell me what this means. You have posted about like light activations or something. And like I saw you, there was like squigglies that were, what is that? <laughs> uh, oh, we're getting real woo over here. I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what you're talking about is light language. So light language is the language of your soul. It trans, it like, it pass, it bypasses your conscious mind and it goes straight into the unconscious. It goes into your DNA. Um, and this is something that I, I hid for a long time. So I've been cultivating my light language channel or gift, uh, for over a year now. Yeah. Since like September, um, I started working with my light language mentor. So light language, I, I do it all. I, I speak it. So if you download the shame reclamation meditation, I do light language there. Um, I do it on my reel sometimes and it's weird. Like it's weird. It sounds like, it sounds like an alien language and there's weird sounds and whatever, but, uh, you can speak it, you can sing it, you can dance, you can write, you can, so the squiggles you saw, those are like written light language. Um, and then hand, hand light language. And the biggest thing with this is that it helped me connect to little Lindsay, because a lot of the doodling that you do, like everyone has that you listening right now, you can do light language, crystal, you can do light language. Every single human on earth has access to light language. And these are little things that kids are doing light language. Like you probably did light language as a kid when you're scribbling, doodling, when you're making weird sounds, like when you're just moving organically, like that's light language. And so bringing it back and cultivating it has really helped me connect with my inner child. And it's so much fun. I literally do it every single freaking day. And it's, it's become a huge part of my business. So in the beginning of one-on-one -on -one sessions, I'll do it. And if people are open and uh, in my group containers and in all my freebies and in all the things, there's always light language. Can you give us a example of some auditory light language? Yeah, I can totally do a light language activation. So what I would love, and this is all, my intention is anytime I speak it or do it or whatever, it's always for someone's highest good. And I will preface this with, if you have any religious programming, a lot of people are like, that sounds like it's speaking in tongues. And I'm, I'm like, it's the cross your arms, like get out of here. So just if, if you don't resonate with it, just skip ahead <laughs> or don't listen. Um, but I love, I would love to invite you to close your eyes and just put a hand on your heart, um, for you listening and just take a nice deep breath and then let it out. <sighs> And I'm trying to see what intention wants to come through. So my intention is just to open your heart with this. Uh, so we will go ahead and start now. And take a nice deep breath and let it out. Ooh. Now I'm curious what you felt, if anything. I don't know if you can see that. I'm like trying not to Crying. cry right now. Oh, what just happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? Like literally the second you started making a noise, I was like, Ugh! <laughs> that's normal that I Whoa. probably should preface what could happen so <laughs> um the with this is the beautiful thing about light language is I don't know I set intentions intentions is, are everything that's what creates your reality and so I I'm working on being able to translate but I don't know what I just shared I I just know that it went straight <laughs> into your heart and that's normal like um getting emotional, feeling like maybe warmth or tingling in certain areas of your body, um, 
feeling. So what I'm trying to think of what some people have felt. Um, I normally feel like sometimes I feel nothing. So you may have felt nothing and that's normal too. Um, there's so many sensations that can come up. There's thoughts, there's like little downloads. Um, so much can happen with light language. That's why it's really cool. Cause it, and this, this is also the difficult thing with it because you're like, what did it do? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you don't need to know that. And it, whatever happened was just tears are your body's way of release. So what I'm intuitively feeling is that whatever, like, because we, we, uh, focused on the heart, you released something there with tears and yeah. that's a beautiful thing. And we don't have to know why we're crying. We don't have to know, like, I'll just get randomly hit with tears. And I'm like, okay, purging. I like to call it purging. I like um, that. It's your body's way of release. And we, as a society, oftentimes, like, I'm so glad that you did not do it. But a lot of people are like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm crying. I'm like, no, 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 no. Never be sorry for crying. <laughs> Please. Yeah. N never. <laughs> Um, that was the first time I've ever done that on a podcast. I love, oh. that you, I love that you, that you gave me something to respond to. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, it reminded me of this one time I did a, um, like a sound bath with like singing bowls. Mm -hmm. There was this one bowl that whenever they hit that one, it like made me want to cry. I was like, what is going on? That frequency just like lit me up. I wish I knew yeah. which one it was. Afterwards, mm -hmm. I was like, there was one that like really resonated and I don't know which one it was. You'll just have to go back and do it again. <laughs> I know, I need to. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, Lindsay, this was so fun. <laughs> I'm like still crying over here. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have a tissue. This is a mess. Um, <laughs> thank you. I am so fascinated with your work. And um, will you tell my listeners if they want to get more of you, where can they find you and where should they start this journey here? <laughs> Oh, thank you. I've loved this conversation so much. Um, I hang out on Instagram the most. So I know you'll have links in the show notes, but I'm Lindsay means with an underscore and send me a DM. Um, I feel like finding a hairstylist or a guide or a mentor, finding anyone is like dating. And I want to make sure that we're the best fit for each other. Um, the start is the shame reclamation meditation, like definitely start there. Cause that's going to open up so much within you. And I'm actually, um, do it. I know it'll be after the time that when this is released, but I'm doing a three day workshop and it's called sacred alchemy, uh, harnessing the power of human design for transformation. And I'll be turning that into an online course. So the pillars of my business, my zones of genius are relationships, embodying your human design and healing and tapping into feminine energy. And so Dora, I'm, I'm calling this the appetizer round. I'm showing off all my skills and my gifts and all of the things that I do. And if you want to, if you want to continue on, here's all the paths to do that. So I would suggest starting with shame reclamation and then uh, joining that and then just DM me and I'll let you know where to go. Lovely. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that are excited to hear more <laughs> from you. And I'm like, I know I need to go make sure I get that shame reclamation and start, you know, diving in a little more. Cause I say I'm like woo ish, but I think I'm really open to woo. <laughs> It's good. And it, there's so much, I do custom light language activations as well, but it's, it's when you, and if you are a generator, your body's responding. Um, so it's like, if you're, as you're listening to this, if the whole time you're like, yes, yes, yes. Like that's how, you know, something's for you. Or if you're like, this girl's freaking weird. And this has been a great <laughs> conversation, but I'm not interested. That's fine too. I'm not for everyone. Um, and that's why shining, like letting your freak flag fly, you will detour people. Right. And that's a good thing. Cause you're yeah. not meant to work with everyone. Mm. Um, so yeah. And you can DM me a copy of your chart too. I love giving people a little insight. It's one of my favorite things to do. Amazing. Well, thank you so much again for being here and for indulging us in some, some <laughs> treats today. Um, it was really a pleasure and I guess I will just keep in contact because I'm, I'm getting woo here, girl. Yay, Thanks so much. Thank okay. You. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, friend. Well, that's a wrap for this episode of the Your Hair Mentor podcast. It has been my pleasure to be here as your host. Again, my name is Crystal Green. And until next time, my friend, as I always love to say, have a wonderful hair day and I'll see you then. Okay, bye.